So, we're at our last job, uh, hot tub install. What we're doing is, consumer units up, up there, we'll go and say in a bit, we're going to install an RCBO on the non-RCE side. Straight out the back, uh, around there somewhere. We're going to come out straight down and then along, along there, along there, along there, along there. Up here into an isolator, just there. Uh, we've got King's Knightsbridge, 63 amp isolator. I've got a bigger one because it's more room. And then just clip direct all the way down there, all the way down, all the way down, there, 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 and just leave the cable coiled up there to, for connection straight into the hot tub when it arrived. That's all they want. Um, Shouldn't take too long, I've allowed two hours, so should be about right. Uh, first thing, get the coil uncabled and see where we're going from there. So we've just drilled out our 20mm holes in the bottom, drilled out our holes for our screws, and also a little drain hole at the bottom there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's there. Uh, going to install the isolator now, we're going to get it level. Actually, I'm going to level the top of it. Because that's what you see from the top, you won't, if you do it like that, it'll look rubbish. So we get, get it back level on the top. Spirit level's fine. Look it up a touch. Okay. Not the wall. where I need my Artline markers. Thank you to Artline. Can't speak. Thank you to Artline for sending me these. Recommend them. Great for whisker boxes, anything like that. Deep, long nib marker from Artline. Grab yourself some of these. This is what we call an SDS drill. And that's for drilling into stone, things like that. Really strong. Solid fixed into the wall. Okay, yeah, these these are called compression glands. What you do is you put them on the outside of the box, fit them in. I'll show you what they do in a minute. You put your cable in there. Tighten that and that grips onto the cable and closes that hole. So then no water, bugs or any dirt it can get in. It's called an impact driver. Screw it into the hole. Screw it in a little bit. Jam squared up. That's that on the other side now. Not going anywhere. We take this off, same as we took the RCD off on the other job. Little catch on the bottom, take that off. Much easier for when you put your cables in. Cut it about there. One's got to go at the top, one's got to go at the bottom. Bring for a bit more. Just cut around. Actually, it's 
too big for that. So let's get a knife. Go around the outset, outside of the cable. This on the ends, on the sheath, sorry. Careful not to go too deep. Once you've scored it, just snap it. It should come apart. Like that. So right, what we've done here is, if you can take a look, is we've taken the line uh, neutral through the isolator. So when we isolate it, it will isolate both supplies. Uh, but what we never isolate is the uh, CPC, circuit protective conductor. Because you want to make sure that in, in any case, it's got a good uh, what I'm doing is I'm using a, an extra big box, it's 63 amp, it doesn't need a 63 amp, but I've gone for that because it gives you plenty of room inside. And this just goes in this terminal block at the side. Leaving enough length on it. So if someone wants to terminate it again at some point, they can, they can do. This cable, type of cable what we've got here is called solid cable because it is just one solid core. On other types of cable, what you've got is you've got um, stranded cable. So you get loads of little strands inside it. They do have codes. This code for this type of cable is called NYYJ. or it's known as high tough in the electrical world because it's a toughened cable meant for outside okay so that's all in there ready for the face to go on now what we're going to do is cleat it we're going to go with uh, size 5 cleats So I'm going to want to go on that brick there, that bit of mortar right down there. Looking at the other side, yeah. That's our first hole.
complex. Probably gonna need my hammer actually. Couple of screws. These are the most important ones. Once you're on the bottom, you can follow the mortar line, so it's quite easy. You know. Well, the thing is, you don't use the spirit level for the ones on the bottom. Because if you use the spirit level and you get them in a straight line, if nice straight line, it's going to look wonky because the house might be going slightly away. So you follow the mortar line, then looks looks all all straight. Perfect. first one on and then once around the corner I'll let you carry on and burn more. Once you're on a straight run it's easy to fly through. you see a dot that's where you drill good yeah keep doing that all the way along You know we are drilling. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Good. You concentrate well. That's good. You need to get everyone the same as as the next one. So yeah, good. guarantee you any apprentice won't be doing that yet <laughs> first out on the job you you know you'd be you'd be running you'd be running around making tea and coffee and doing all sorts of things no, i've been doing all the um dog's work and you've been cracking on so good well done i can see you've got a bit of confidence so confidence is good but not too much you should always know your limits yeah but you're doing well I'll just screw these lot in and then I'll catch up with you. I 
idea of working uh, neatly is what you do is you do the same amount of attention whether it be Monday morning and you're just starting your week or Friday night and you want to get home get out down the pub with your mates and so you get the same amount of um, attention with everything yeah now you got it spot on no I think you would do well to keep that sort of level of concentration and attention that's you know spot on for any sort of year one or or year three apprentice that's good can you remember what this cable was called Nope. <laughs> it's alright. Are you joking? You're alright. Can you remember what type of testing do we complete after we've done this? I've no oh, idea. That's fine. I have you, no you, idea. You're not expected to know. Are you joking? You're alright. You're quizzing me while I'm doing yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we get pop quizzes every so often. What's, what's that black thing called that you're. Push, uh, putting onto the wall. Yeah, cleat. Cleat, well done. Um, I went well, one I smashed it already. You'll be starting up your own channel soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be how not to do everything. No, you don't not. do this. You're Bam. doing. You're doing. <laughs> spot on. It's brilliant. What's the power tool that you're using to screw them in? The drill. Nope. How what did you say it earlier? Oh, it's different, isn't it? It's an yeah. impact drill. Yeah, it's an impact driver, I'll give you that. Yeah. What tool do we use to make the holes in the wall? Oh, I don't know that. We, I, I did, know I did those say different it. names for it. I'm test well, what do you know it as? Oh. Oh, we, oh, what did my pal call it? No, he swearing. just calls it another drill. That's all I get told. It's yeah. a drill. It's a drill. I did say it earlier, so I'm I'm testing on things that I already said. It's called an SDS. SDS. Yeah. What does that sound for? Don't ask me. What do you think? What do you think I am? You're the one who's supposed to know it all. Because of me. I don't know what SDS means. <laughs> Come on, if someone knows what SDS means, then let us know, because I ain't got a clue. I can't even take a guess what it means. SDS. Something drill, something rather. Super drill. Yes, yeah, so the super drill, something. What's the red thing in the wall called? Red thing in the wall is called, oh, I should know that. I should know that. <laughs> I've used them before, loads. Oh, brain says packer, but is it? No, it's not. Packer's different. Packer's a little flat thing you use for laminate stuff. I know what packer is. Um, I don't know. I've actually lost. I've lost my brain. Uh, the brand name is Raw Plug. Or wall, wall plug. It's a wall plug. Yeah. <clears throat> it's called a wall plug. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wall plug. You know that? It's in the... Um. <laughs> Ah, oh, ah, oh, this one. What's this called here? What's this called? Back there. I'm bleeding. <laughs> You're bleeding? Yeah. You're dying? Yeah. You're dying? I'm bleeding out. What's that called? Um, I'm happy to do the rest if you want. Uh, no, I'll keep going. It's just I've scraped it off the floor, that's all. Mm -hmm. I think I've got some plasters. Thing be, being an electrician, you always get marks, cuts, everything. Look at my finger now. <laughs> you get cuts everywhere. Part of the job. It's called an isolator, that. Ooh, wait, Careful. Uh, you saw that, didn't you? I saw that. I was like, hold on, wait, that's the yeah. wrong side. Yeah, good. Good thinking. This would be a good test for you. See if you've got a good memory. What? <laughs> What type of RCDs are we installing now? Come on, I know you can get this one. What type of what, what, the what, what? <laughs> RCDs. Remember we chatted to it, chatted about it. Yeah. What type of RCD? I'm not trying to catch you out because I'm not expecting you to know the answer. Hey, my memory is the worst thing. Yeah, you have to get used to remembering things. 
You have to remember, you have to remember about 50 formulas. Okay, formulas are cool. Formulas are right. See, I like maths. Yeah, you have to It's just memorizing stuff like names of stuff. I can tell you exactly what it does. What the name of it is, right. no idea. What does an RCD do? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said you could tell me what? No, I don't know. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, stop. What? Uh, can you pull that a bit tighter, that cable? If I, if I put it here, you see that little, there's a little bit of a loop there. I'm gonna try and get that in like that, yeah. Go for that. That's all right, no, you've done all right. I'll do for it, go for it. Okay, okay. So slowly, slowly, slowly. Ah. That's what happens. So I take him out and yeah. do that one again. Get a new one. I've got, got one here. That's the thing, it's no big deal if you, if you mess it up. We've got loads to spare. You think I don't mess things up? I, I mess things up, don't I? About that? It's only a little thing. Go. Let's grab this little cable out of the way for you. Pull that a bit. Okay. No, you, you're doing it right. You're doing good, so. Just don't quiz me. Don't worry about it too much. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't remember much. That's fine. You'll get used to it. So we need to drill out, drill from inside out. Um, <laughs> this is the main nerve. This wasn't even tightened up. That was, I haven't touched that. And that's loose as anything. That's the main nerve. I've loosened these ones, but I want to go through the back here and straight out. See how they've done there. They've, um, see they couldn't get back in. But we've got a whisker block, whisker box that them black things, black boxes that will go straight over that and then straight down. Literally, I couldn't have done that any better. Straight out there, straight down, down to there. Good, isn't it? And then what we do is we go back through with a big, big drill bit. Bit of an angle, so Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what angle I've got on it. I can't trust. I'm going to get the same angle. Okay, so it's that. That's the angle I want to go in at, not that where I was. Perfect. Right, because we're drilling inside the house, what we want to do is fill the hole with silicon sealant. I always use clear, but it doesn't really make a difference what one you use because you're not going to see this one. Stops all sorts of things, bugs, and all sorts. That's more than enough, it's probably too much. What's this called? Impact something. <laughs> it's just silly. I'm literally just silly. Impact roller or something. Yeah, there impact driver. Here you go, spot on. Driver. Driver. It drives screws. It took me ages. I mean, I only got the name of this about a year ago. <laughs> That's how bad it is, you know. Right. Drain oil at the bottom. Bit awkward because we've got this uh, trellis there. Mm. 
Nearly done, mate. Nearly done. <laughs> Six mil, two and a half. So when we do the installation certificate, even though the big cable outside is all the same size conductors, we go on the minimum. So we'll go on this size. size. So it'll be six mil and I think 2.5 mil CPC. What does CPC stand for? Ah, you've forgotten. So, I have forgotten. It's all right, mate. All right. I'll always ask you questions and you will get them in the end and you'll think, how did I remember that? Good. So, as before, remember we changed the RCD. This the same sort of thing, same sort of principle. But this is called an RCBO. Difference between this, so we got we saw these earlier, didn't we? We saw their MCBs, so they provide overcurrent protection. So if we remember, if we plug too many things into a socket, uh, that will overload that and trip. And this um, trips if it comes into a fault with an appliance or or something like that, or someone's drilled for a cable. Okay, so that, that's why that will trip on, a, on an earth fault. This is one of these and one of these together in one RCBO. So that's what that is. So if we install any, any electrical, um, anything electrical, we need to make sure it complies to the current regulations. So the current regulations require it to be um, RCD protected. There's new regulations coming in. Which, which remember we, we spoke about at that other customer's house where we um, need to make sure you've got type A RCDs. This is a type A RCD, so we're, so we're in over okay. Again, let's drop this buzz bar out. Mm, it's gone up tight, I missed it. See, I missed, I missed the buzz bar there, so that buzz bar went behind that, which will cause a problem, because it caused fires and stuff like that. So you make sure it's in properly. When we're putting in a new circuit, we need to make sure that this this conductor, known as what? Earth. No, it's oh. not. Oh. You can say letters or the num or the words. Is it S P C? No. C P C. That's, that's all right. There you go. We need to make sure that this is continuous along the whole length and it's got a good um, resistance. So it's a low resistance. Well, the, re the way we do that is we'll, we'll use this brown cable, known as, as the line. And we'll measure from one end all the way down <coughs> to the end of the cable and all the way back to here. How do we do that? Let's go and have a look outside. So you've got the line coming out there. Uh, out there, yeah. And it comes down, follow the cable, following the line conductor through the isolator, we need to make sure that the isolator is fixed on. It's now on, I mean we've got a, a continuous path. Comes out of the isolator, all the way around, into the end of this cable, and there. Now this is how we measure back through the conductor, through the line conductor, is we put the connection, there's various ways you can do this. I'm just going to use Wago. What it does is it connects these two cables together. The line and the CPC. Don't worry about the neutral for now. We want to make sure that CPC is continuous. So it's going to come in from the line and out via the CPC. 
when it goes out it follows the same path back all the way back same route we came into the oscillator back out up into the whisker box through the wall into the consumer unit and this is it so we know that these two conductors should be connected because we joined up the other end and we're going to find out what the reading is. Let's just have a look at that. 0.00. That is pretty much the perfect reading you can get. We know it's not 0.00. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put that as 0.01. But that shows that this conductor is continuous along its whole path. And we've got a good earth. If there's a fault, we know that that's going to trip the RCD. Okay, now what we need to do is go and disconnect that conductor with that way go at the end. Now, the second test that we complete is um, an insulation resistance test. And what we're doing now is making sure that all these cables, three cables, are not touching anywhere and not damaged within the whole of that circuit that we've done because we could have maybe caused it some damage. So we'll measure between each conductor neutral. And where is he gone? So between neutral and the line, put it onto insulation distance. Uh, we should be able to go for 500 because there's nothing on it at all. So more than 1999.9 mega ohms. We know they're not touching anywhere in the installation. Measure from neutral to CPC, do the same test. On oh, 1999. So we know they're all the same. Last one, line to CPC. Same test. One nine 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 megohms. So we're happy that none of these cables are touching within the installation. So we know that the installation we've got now is fine and working fine. We can then put it into our um, RCBO. It's probably a little bit too much showing on that, so I'll give them a little cut. Don't want to really want too much copy showing. Into the top of neutral, into the top of the line again. Going to give them a little haircut. And CPC we're going to put into the earth bar or main earth terminal. Cut a little bit off. And this is can this is circuit number one, two, three, four, five. This is circuit five, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Five is occupied, so we're going to go next one along for some reason. Not ideal, but I'm not sitting here rearranging the circuit around. So we're happy that is all good. What a mess of conductors in here, it really is. These are bonding conductors, Let's make sure these are back in. And then the main earthing conductor. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to carry out another test, which is called the Zeddy. And what this does is it measures to make sure that the main earth going out is a good earth. So if there is a fault, then you've got any fault currents will go straight to earth without any problems. You learn all this. Maximum Z you want is low. Into the line bar. 0 0.07, bang on, perfect. As low as you can. You can see this has got some black on because it wasn't connected up, up properly before. It's got some blackening on it where it's a bit loose. Can be a nightmare to get this back in. Next test we complete is called uh, PFC, it's prospective fault current. If there's a problem, then 
Um, we need to know how much current we've got coming through in a, in a fault in fault condition. So we'll have 2.85 kiloamps. That's fine because this is rated at 6,000 kiloamps. 2.85 there. And I'm going through it a bit quick. But you might expect it to know this, so I don't worry about it so much. Expect a short circuit current. 2.99 kiloamps, that's high, so we'll take that. Um, now you should measure the ZS at the other end because we're going to use that by calculation. Because um, we've got we know our ZE, we don't know our um, R1 plus R2. So we're happy, it's all good. Um, and then last thing we'll do is connect up at the other end. We'll do our um, RCD test. When people have got all different breakers in here, it's can be a nightmare. So with the MK1 there, they've cut out the bottom because it didn't fit. Okay, so we're happy. We've got a hot tub and we can uh, re-energize re re everything else. One at a time. Two are all good to go. What we need to do now, the RCBO is off at, at the consumer unit. We're going to isolate the supply here. That's in the off position. And what we'll do the hot tub company just wanted this to be left there just like that. Um, but I wasn't happy doing that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in a freeway where you go. Don't forget it's isolated at the isolator, so you get double hole isolation, so in, in theory it, it shouldn't trip the RCD. Or the RCBO. Put all them in there, all these into the same way you go. And then if somebody does inadvertently trick it on, it'll just trip it. So there won't be any cause of any, any problems. Leave that in there and put the whisker box back, back on. Whisker lid back on. Get a whisker box and we'll put him put him out of the way somewhere. What I'll probably do is get a cable tie and just cable tie it to that. Just so that we know it's not going to get any water in it. It's under the cover anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's all we do today. So we're just coming back to drop Kieran off. How do you think that went, Kieran? Pretty well, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. It was a little bit different than I thought it would be because I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated. Like, I thought I was going to be spending the whole time wondering what's going on. Mm -hmm. But it was really well explained by you and it makes quite a lot of sense to me. And I really do want to look into it. I really yeah. do. I really want to. You've done, you done a smart thing in don't jump in with two feet. You went out for a day um, just to see what it's like and just see whether you even like it. You might not even like it, you might choose to go somewhere else. Um, so from my side of things, what I would say is what you could have done better is, I, I can't pick you up on anything of what you could have done better, to be honest with you. I think you've done everything pretty good. Um, you got a smart head on you. Um, you listened very well. Anything I, talk, I asked you to do, you've done, and you give it all your attention. Um, and also something which a lot of apprentices don't do if you weren't comfortable with something you just said oh can you do this or can you show me how to do this or, or something like that so that side of things i think you'll do well as an apprentice i think you you really will do well <laughs> it's hard course you have to do a lot of maths but you said you, you're quite good at maths maths is a good point uh so i reckon if you wanted to give it a go you'd do really well in it again guys if, you, if you've got any information for kieran any hints and tips uh let me know um there are loads of youtubers on youtube and i'll i'll show it to you what who they are um you can watch uh, apart from that mate you know yeah you done well finish your course what you're doing now you're doing the, the tree um it's surgery good. finish that for this year if you wanted to get into it then look into doing an apprenticeship I'll probably be 
looking at taking someone on pretty soon so if you want to come with me but I mean you just need to sit sit and think about what you want to do with your life so it's yeah. up to you either way I'm quite happy I'm happy to take you out or whatever you want to do but just do whatever you want to do don't don't like feel pressurized into it because you might not like it in the end but yeah no well done today not you done well cracked on really really good so we're all done uh, I'm gonna drive home and finish off the video because it is a day in life an electrician and I don't live here so that's it finally done uh, we left at nine o'clock this morning and we got home at six o'clock it's bang on six o'clock now Five fifty-nine, actually so that's what it's like a day in life electrician Kieran was a good lad yeah well done to him uh, so good luck to him in the future what he, whatever he chooses to do but I'm sure he'll, he'll do well got him in lovely bit of dinner waiting for me when I get home oh, she's so well trained I know she's giving me the evil she's gonna kill me well there might be some poison in this <laughs> Cheers guys, and uh, hand over to me and Kieran in the van. Bye guys. So, as Kieran's watched all of our videos in the past, what's our sign off? Can you remember what the sign no, off is? I have no idea. You, you're not inspiring me. I have not. Right. <laughs> it's been a long time since I saw him, that's, but I remember seeing him. That's all right, mate. I'm right, joking. So we're pretty much done. One thing left to say, and that is like, comment, share, Prescribe. Prescribe, you got it. <laughs>